Hi everyone, my name is Kim. I'm here today from Sustainable Kingston. And today we're going to answer the question, why do we bother with the three R's? As in, why do we reduce, freeze, and recycle? What's the big deal? Over the course of this video series, we've discussed the meaning of the three R's, the recycling process, and how to sort through your recycling in Kingston. But now we're going to look at the bigger picture in more detail. As in, why is it so important to reduce your consumption and waste creation, reuse the items that you already own, and to recycle old materials into new things instead of using new materials? I've broken this video down into a few sections, or learning goals. Firstly, we're going to talk about the impacts of landfills. Then, we're going to talk about the impacts of plastic waste. Following that, we're going to talk about the issue of limited space. And then, we're going to talk about some hope for the future. The final part is up to you, where I hope you will reflect on what we have learned and apply it to your life. By discussing these topics, I hope to explain just how important the three R's are in protecting our world and creating a more sustainable future for all. So, onto our first section, the impacts of landfills, specifically their impacts on our environment. The way we currently deal with our waste tends to be unsustainable. Landfills are overflowing because people are not following the three R's and instead are throwing everything into landfill, or big piles of garbage. Landfills, however, are unfortunately a source of significant danger and damage to our environment. You may be wondering, is it really that bad if I put recyclables and organic material into the garbage? Well, to begin to answer that question, we're going to talk about leachate. Do you know what leachate is? Leachate is a liquid substance made within landfills. It is made when rainwater or snow trickles in through garbage piles and collects heavy metals and chemicals from products that should have been diverted from the landfill. Some of these products are batteries, nail polish remover, paints, oils, plastics, organics, and many more. As can be seen in this graphic, once the substance forms, it poses a serious environmental risk. When leachate works its way down to the bottom of the garbage pile and through the protective liner, it hits soil and water. The only way to stop leachate from spreading is to dig up all of the soil and replace it with new soil. However, this process is not really a realistic solution and can be expensive. Additionally, if leachate contaminates the soil and the water, it can be very damaging for both human and environmental health. Overall, we aim to avoid leachate by composting and recycling properly. Another damaging impact of landfills is their creation of greenhouse gases. When organic products are left in the landfill, they are eaten by tiny microbes. Microbes are tiny living things that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. These microbes release chemical gases when they eat organics. Some of these gases released are methane and carbon dioxide. Do you know what the danger of too much methane and carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is? Methane and carbon dioxide belong to a group of gases known as greenhouse gases which create what we call the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is when gases, such as methane and carbon dioxide, are released into the atmosphere and create a sort of shield between Earth's atmosphere and space. This shield lets the sun's radiation in, but does not let that radiation or the extra radiation created by us out. This means that we have trapped all of this heated radiation inside of our atmosphere, and it has nowhere to go. This effect is similar to that of being inside a greenhouse, hence the name, where heat is essentially trapped inside its walls in order to keep the plants warm. 
However, in our case, on a global scale, too much greenhouse gases in our atmosphere end up creating a global rise in temperature, thus changing our climates. Landfills are one of the top producers of methane and carbon dioxide released into our atmosphere. And all because we are not following the three R's and diverting organics from the landfill. Climate change has many effects upon our environment. For example, because of the increased temperatures, animals that live in certain climates can no longer sustain themselves. This means they need to leave and find a new home or adapt to the new climate. Everything in our world is connected. Unfortunately, this means that everything can also be impacted by climate change. This is just a brief overview of the impacts of landfills on the environment, but I encourage you to learn as much as you can. Now we're going to move on and talk specifically about the issue with plastic waste. We all know about plastic, but what's the big deal? Plastic has been around for about 120 years, however, plastic takes years and years to break down meaning most of the plastic produced 120 years ago is still around today. For example, according to the WWF, plastic bags take around 20 years to break down, coffee cups 30 years, plastic straws 200 years, and around 450 years for plastic water bottles. Unfortunately, this means that there's a lot of plastic in our landfills and in our environment. Plastic is a lightweight product, meaning it travels very easily. When plastic is left in the environment, animals can eat it, mistaking it for food. Now these animals have plastic in their stomachs. And once they get eaten by another animal, that plastic will transfer over to the next animal. And this cycle goes on and on and on. When the cycle is finally broken because the animal has died, that plastic will not decompose with the animal. It will remain on the ground until it gets eaten by another animal, or it will break down over years and years and years. Another issue related to plastic is what we call microplastics. <coughs> Microplastic is created when plastic waste makes its way to water. Plastic will break down in water, but it will never go away. It will only become smaller and smaller plastic particles, creating tiny or microplastics. Why do you think this might be a problem? Much like the issue of animals eating plastic on land, fish also begin to eat plastic when it's broken down and too small to know what it is. The issue with plastic being so small is because it resembles plankton. Fish are now eating plastic instead of plankton. Now that fish have stomachs full of microplastic, they make their way through the food chain and eventually sometimes they make it to us, meaning we too consume microplastics. Gross, right? Plastic waste and microplastic waste pose a huge threat to our environment. This is why it is so important to reduce our consumption of plastics, to reuse our plastic products, and to recycle them. Our next topic is the issue with limited space. We are making more and more waste every day, yet we are running out of space to put it. Canada itself has over 10,000 landfills to hold our waste. It additionally exports a large amount of its waste to be dumped in other countries. When we don't recycle properly, or at all, landfills get larger and larger. However, did you know that here in Kingston, an average garbage bag sent to the landfill contains 15% recyclables and 35% divertible organics. This means that more than half of the garbage that we are creating is recyclable. Meaning that there's room for change. Luckily, global and local leaders are realizing these issues and are taking action. On March 5, 2019, the City of Kingston became the first Ontario municipality to declare that climate change is an emergency. This vote was unanimous among councillors. 
It has been Kingston's vision to become the most sustainable city in Canada for some time. In 2014, Kingston's Climate Action Plan was released as a detailed summary of the issues facing Kingston as well as climate action goals for the future. Since then, Kingston has taken many actions towards improving sustainability for the entire community. However, we need your help. Youth have been some of the most influential people in pushing for sustainability and climate action. This means that you have the power to push for what you believe in. We need to change the way that we live in order to protect the planet and ensure that future and current generations have a beautiful and sustainable place to live. In terms of waste, we need to work towards the three R's, with reducing as our top priority. We hope that throughout this video series, you have been able to learn about the three R's, how to complete them, and why they are so important. Leachate, the greenhouse gas effect, plastic waste, microplastics, and landfill space are some of the biggest environmental and sustainability issues facing our world today. We encourage you to use our worksheets to test out your knowledge on these topics, and if you have any questions, to reach out using our social media.